Hello. Welcome to Mathematicas.net. Today we are going to discuss the topic of the limit of a function between metric spaces. Let us consider two metric spaces, E capital D and F capital D prime. Here D and D prime are the respective metrics or distances. If we now have a non-empty subset A of E, a function defined from capital A to capital F, an accumulation point of capital A, which we call lowercase f, and a point of f, L. We say that the limit when x tends to lowercase a of f of x is L. If and only if for every epsilon greater than zero, this is a real number. There is a delta, greater than zero, that will also depends on that epsilon. So that if we choose any x from a, to verify that its distance. In this case, since it is a capital E point, I put d. Its distance between x and a is greater than zero and less than that delta. Then the distance between the image f, x, of that x and the value of l is less than epsilon. This is the definition in terms of epsilon delta. Is it practical? Yes, but it can also be cumbersome for you. Now, this can also happen in a more general way. Through the topologies induced by the respective metrics. Suppose here we have a topology T induced by the metric D, and here another T prime induced by the D prime metric. In these topologies the most interesting basic concept it is the open ball centered on a point. For example, since we are working with A, if we take a point, lowercase a, of capital E, the ball centered on A, of radius R, with R being a positive number, is the open ball, is the set of those elements of capital E, whose distance to point A is less than that value R. Very good, the idea of neighborhood remains the same than in any other topology, that is, the neighborhood of a point A would be any set that contains an open set that in turn contains point A. It can be shown that these balls are open sets. In fact, as I have already mentioned, they are the basic concept to then define all the open ones. Well, well, now I'm going to give the definition. Based on neighborhoods are based on balls. Well, I would say then that the limit as x tends to point A of f of x is L, if and only if, for every ball centered on L of radius epsilon. I can find a ball centered at a of radius delta such that if x belongs to the ball centered at a of radius delta minus A intersection capital A, that is if it is an element of this ball without being the center A and being an element of A, then f of x it belongs to the ball with center L and radius epsilon Graphically, I use lines because it is more familiar. Because we generally refer to real functions, real variables, but you can think about other types of questions. For example, using elements of the plane. But okay, I'm going to use lines here. If the limit as x tends to a, 
of f of x was equal to l. Then taking a ball centered at l of an arbitrary radius epsilon, we could find another ball centered on a of a radius that would generally depend of the radius taken here, that of the epsilon. So any element here, x, that it was an element of A and that it was different from point A. Any of these that belong to A would have its image here in the ball that we took at the beginning. With center L and radius epsilon. Well, that's the idea. But since they are metric spaces, successions sometimes make our work easier. And they allow us to affirm or deny that such a limit exists. I am going to give a theorem that will clarify this question for you. It's the next one. Very good. If they are equivalent, the following. I'm going to give an equivalence. 1. Limit as x tends to of f of x as l. And 2. For every sequence x sub n. Of capital A elements, other than point A. Which converges to point A. We have that f of x sub n as a sequence of elements of set f. Which converges to L. That is, in the terms we have already seen. If this limit is L. It happens that every sequence of elements of this set, A minus the point A. Which converges to the point A. You have to have the image, which is a new succession. The succession of images. A new sequence of F. It is also a sequence that converges to L. Okay? Well, since this is an equivalence condition, I'm going to prove that 1 implies 2 and that 2 implies 1. Okay? Well, I'm going to prove that 1 implies 2. Suppose that the limit as x tends to of f of x is equal to L. Then what you have here will happen, at the ball level. Any ball centered on L with radius epsilon determines a ball centered at A with radius delta. So take a point on the ball centered at point A of radius delta. That is not the center and that belongs to implies A. Implies that the image of that point belongs to the ball centered at L with radius epsilon. As we have said that X sub N is a sequence that converges to the point A. Being X sub N different values of A. All of them different from point A. Then for that delta. This delta determined here. There will exist a positive integer n sub 0. So that if n is greater than or equal to n sub 0. Then x sub n, the distance d. Because we are talking about elements of metric space E. The distance d between x sub n and a will be less than delta. Or what is the same, x sub n will belong to the ball centered in the pointer with delta radius that does not contain the center. And of course since these are elements of the set capital A and delta will belong to this. Now, we have already seen that. Of course, by giving this epsilon and determining this delta, this is going to be fulfilled. We have given that epsilon, this delta has come out, and this delta has determined an n greater than or equal to n sub so this zero. Happens. Therefore f of x sub n will belong to the ball. 
This is why it is an image of a point that is here. To the ball centered at L with radius epsilon. As long as n is greater than or equal to n sub 0. And this will mean that the distance between f of x sub n and L is less than epsilon. As long as n is greater than or equal to n sub 0. That is, the limit when n tends to infinity. Of f of x sub n as L precisely. Therefore, 1 implies 2. Okay? Now I'm going to try the reciprocal. That 2 implies 1. But I'm not really going to do it like that. Because? Well, it's very simple. It is more comfortable for me to prove that number 1 implies number 2. Which is logically equivalent to proving that 2 implies 1. What does number 1 mean? Well, the limit when x tends to of f of x does not exist or is different from L. And at the level of definition, what would it mean? Now think about the epsilons and delta that I put at the beginning. I have set for every epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta of that, that epsilon so that certain things were fulfilled. That for everything x such 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 such. Well, denying this means that there will be an epsilon greater than zero so that whatever delta you want to choose there will exist except an x that will not verify what I want to be fulfilled. Okay? At the ball level, how do I do it? Good. There exists an epsilon greater than zero so that for every delta greater than zero. I am going to find a value x that will belong to capital A and that will not be the point itself. Such that x will belong to the ball centered at point A, of radius delta, intersection A. Okay, here's this too. So f of x does not belong to the ball centered at L of radius epsilon. Okay? That is, there is a ball here centered at L of radius epsilon, so it doesn't matter. The one you want to take here in A. Okay? In this case, you can find a point in any of the ones you choose. So that the image is left out. Okay? I repeat, there will be a way that any of what you say here in the balls centered on point A will allow defining a point whose image will be left out. That is the central idea of denial. Okay? Well, having seen that, let's assume, then. What will be continuity? Sorry, what will be this condition, too? That for every x sub n, every sequence of values of capital A that are not the point A that converges to point A, we have that the succession of the images which is a sequence in F, converges to L. Let's assume it's true. We take this epsilon, the one we know exists. For all these circumstances that we have put here at the beginning. Okay? We take this epsilon. We have seen that for any delta, no matter what it is, this will be true. So let's do these deltas, 1 match n. Obviously they are all greater than 0, for n equal to 1, 2, so on. Okay? Good. So, we know that the limit as n tends to infinity of x sub n is a. And now, this means that the distance between x sub n and the point a. Now it is smaller than 1 over n. Okay? Because? 
Well, actually, taking this as a value to define the idea of limit of the sequence. Then, given this, there will exist an n sub 0. So that if n is greater than or equal to n sub 0, this will be true. Okay? Do you see it? Good. So, of course, what's going on here? Well, f of x sub n, l, has to be greater than or equal to epsilon. It's off the ball, okay? Therefore, the distance between f of x sub n and l is greater than or equal to epsilon. If n is greater than or equal to n sub 0. So, given an epsilon, I'm going to find an n sub 0. So that if n is greater than or equal to n sub 0. The distance between f of x sub n and l is greater than or equal to epsilon. That is, all the terms will be out from. For example, from n sub 0 plus 1, from that place. What does it mean then? That it does not exist, that the limit, or rather, of f of x sub n is different from l. Well, it exists, I don't know. In principle, it is different from l, which was what I wanted to try. Of course, that contradicts condition 2. Therefore, condition 2 cannot be true. So not 1 implies not 2, which is logically equivalent to 2 implying 1. In summary, the existence of this limit can be guaranteed through successions. Well, I'm done with this.